everyone, welcome to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armoury. This is where all weapons from Halo Law be featured and analysed in detail, and in this episode we look at the knives of the UNSC. I have no idea why I haven't done it sooner, so here we go. Knives have a long history of usage with humanity, being some of the first tools humans ever used, and they have remained a mainstay of hand tools in a variety of cases since its first inception. Though the knife has gone through various iterative changes over the years, it remains largely unchanged in form and function. While material sciences have advanced, knives that keep their cutting edge for longer and are tougher to general damage from usage have supplanted earlier, less advanced versions. Knives in the 26th century are just as instantly recognisable as knives from the 18th, 19th, 20th and 21st centuries, but there are some changes that are most definitely worth noting. One version of the UNSC's more common multi-purpose combat knives bears a near identical appearance to modern military combat knives, with a 20cm or 7.9 inch blade made of a high carbon steel. The use of high carbon steel is a design choice made for its material properties being stronger and more durable than stainless steels, and being wear resistant, meaning it maintains its edge for much longer, at the cost of resistance to corrosion and rusting that would otherwise be provided by high chromium content in stainless steels. This knife is also treated with an anti-flash, non-reflective titanium carbide coating so that the knife can be used without reflecting a light source and giving away the position of the wielder should that reflection catch the eye of enemy forces, snipers included. This coating also gives some corrosion and rust resistance to the knife, something that would be lacking with an uncoated carbon steel. The titanium carbide no doubt helps the knife maintain an edge for slightly longer than the high carbon steel would on its own, as well as the addition of measurable toughness to the cutting edge. The knife is also balanced, making it ideal for throwing. There are many other blades seen used by UNSC personnel, however it's worth noting many of them are actually not directly issued by the UNSC. For example, Emil A239 used a large kukri for his knife of choice, mounted in its own scabbard on his Mjolnir armor's pauldron, while Major Faison of the UNSC Marine Corps had a much larger knife with the words Bug Hunter engraved into the blade that he kept sheathed at his ankle. Exact placement of a knife on the individual is generally down to personal preference, with some keeping the knives stored at their lower back, shoulder plates, chest, wrist, thighs, waist and ankle to name a few. As previously mentioned, the knife has changed very little in centuries, however with the arrival of the Spartan super soldiers and their immense physical power from their augmentations and their cybernetic symbiotic connection to their immensely powerful Mjolnir powered assault armour, additional innovations had to be made to the knife to make better use of the Spartan's abilities and additional strength. The Spartan 3's standard issue combat knife features a self-sharpening blade made of a hyper-dense material. This is all the information we actually have in the lore, but nevertheless I've gone a step further. This material, at least to my research, would likely be something along the lines of perhaps a titanium diboride, an alloy of titanium and boron which is an extremely hard ceramic with good wear resistance and oxidation stability. As far as the property of self-sharpening is concerned, it's not that the material itself maintains its edge somehow, but rather the sheath or scabbard that the knife locates into likely has rotary sharpening rails that sharpen and hone the blade every time it is sheathed or unsheathed. The only other combat knife designed and built specifically for Spartans is the M11 combat knife, the standard close combat weapon of the Spartan operations. Manufactured by the Watershed Division since around 2551, the M11 is constructed with a hyper-dense metal alloy, making it nearly unbreakable. Again, there are no specifics regarding the exact material used, but I would argue it is likely an evolution of the Spartan III standard issue combat knife, being made of titanium diboride, but I would go a step further and suggest that the knife may be forged as a single crystal super alloy, 
meaning it has a perfectly ordered atomic matrix throughout the entirety of the blade, and could be coated in a Wurzite boron nitride. This form of boron nitride is extremely rare, but also extremely hard. Generally formed during volcanic eruptions, it's only ever been discovered in minute quantities, which means that we've never really tested its hardness properties experimentally. However, it forms a different kind of crystal lattice, a tetrahedral one, instead of a face-centered cubic one. That is 18% harder than diamond, according to the most recent simulations at least. Although this is currently outside of our capabilities to produce, technologically speaking, it stands to reason that in the 26th century we may have found a way to create this form of boron nitride in the lab, thereby allowing the combat knives to be coated in it. Of course, this is just an assumption and it is possible other engineering practices have since become available, allowing much harder, much denser materials. Such techniques may include the forging or tempering of materials under artificial graphitic fields, forcing the material to experience tens or hundreds of Gs during the creation. The term hyperdense, at least in relation to material science, is something of a misnomer. Density is entirely jurisdicted by the properties of the respective material, and a higher density of material doesn't necessarily give you the desired properties that you need in a combat knife. It could be argued, for example, that using something like tungsten or depleted uranium as the material for the blade would be favourable if you're looking for a material that is hyper-dense. But tungsten is actually very brittle, meaning that if it goes through extremely high forces, particularly in shear forces, the blade will shatter. In the case of depleted uranium, while yes, the material itself is extremely dense, it's also very brittle and extraordinarily heavy, and in the grand scheme of things, most mainstream manufacturing processes would find it extraordinarily difficult to machine or hone a blade made of depleted uranium in any real sense. These are some of the mitigating factors behind my decision to use titanium diboride for a combat knife rather than these hyperdense materials such as tungsten and depleted uranium, because as previously stated, density doesn't necessarily equal strength and indeed high density doesn't necessarily give you the desired mechanical properties you require of a knife. When wielded by a Spartan, the M11 can be thrust with such force as to be sufficient to penetrate energy shielded and hardened armour. These blades are extraordinarily sharp and retain their edge even after repeated use, again likely due to sharpening rails within the sheath of the knife. It measures 365.8 millimeters in length and weighs around 2 kilograms, which, for a knife of its proportions, is fairly heavy, although again, for a Spartan, it would be nothing. Knives have been an integral part of civilized life for humanity since its earliest days, and have been used as both tools of utility and aggressive weapons since humanity first began using sharpened stones. Though it's many millennia of use by humans, we have iterated and innovated upon its design to the point that there is very little, at least with current material science, that we can do to improve them any more. That being said, the suggestions I have made here to potential avenues of innovation for knives wielded specifically by Spartans could go a decent way to push the humble knife to a weapon of mass destruction when used by a talented Spartan super soldier. One in particular comes to mind. All right, the great journey ends here. Thanks for watching. Sticky comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members, Neek the Silent Cartographer, Siphonic Storm and Todd Morrison, my tier zero transcendience. Brian, Sebastian, Darian, Red Sea, Stalk of the Realms, Falcon, Starlight, Alvin, Flaming Halo, Josh, Legions Lost, Kyle, Katarnakam, Schneidish, Leon, Ignizel, Chris, Cooper, Prophet Bear, and Devon, the Holders of the Mantle, my glorious reclaimers, my loyal Metarchs, and all the other patrons and members that have jumped aboard to support the channel. Much love to you guys, thanks so much for your support, it's keeping things happening and helping the development of the channel and future awesomeness in a big, big way. 
If you like Halo lore, discuss to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there or jumping on as a channel member. It would mean the world to me and afford you loads of awesome perks and bonuses while also helping work towards some awesome stuff in the near and distant future. Take it easy everyone and find peace in the domain.